So let's talk about what are the concepts that we're going to need to work with for one-dimensional kinematics. Uh, one key concept is time. We need to know what the symbol is that we're going to be using for that. We'll be using a lowercase t. And we need to know what the standard SI unit is for time. Good. Now, of course, in ordinary life, people usually use minutes or hours, but in physics, the standard SI unit is seconds. That's really all I have to say about that. Now, a more complicated concept is your position. Now, in order to say what someone's position is, you have to give, um, identify some axes. So, for example, um, you might have, say, an x-axis and a y-axis. And here the, the arrows tell us which is the positive direction. So the positive direction here is to the right and up. Or you might have different axes. Here's different axes where the positive directions are to the left and up. In most problems, you can choose whatever positive directions you want. But th these are the most standard ones to pick. Now we're just going to be dealing right now with one-dimensional motion. Um, so if we're dealing with one-dimensional horizontal motion, it would be natural to use x for position. Or if you're dealing with one-dimensional vertical motion, it would be natural to use y for, permission, uh, for position. Uh, next week, when you do two-dimensional motion, you're going to be using r for position because it has to represent both the x and the y. But this week, x and y will be good enough for us. Um, so for example, you might say x equals positive 5 meters. And then you would know that the object is here, if we're ignoring the y component. Or you might say y equals negative 3 meters. And then you would know the object is here if we're ignoring the x component. So in this chapter, we're just going to be on the axes. What do you think is um, the standard SI unit for position? Meters. That's right. That's the one I was just using. But you might see problems in kilometers or millimeters or whatever. Now, actually, in kinematics, you usually don't use the concept of position you usually use the concept of displacement, which is based on the position. So if you're dealing with one-dimensional horizontal motion, you would probably use the symbol delta x for the displacement. Or one-dimensional vertical motion, you would probably use the symbol delta y. Next week, when you're dealing with two-dimensional motion, you might use delta r for the overall. But here, we'll just use delta x or delta y. Um, do you know what does delta mean in math? That's right. And now this is very important. What's the formula for calculating change? So final minus initial. Good. Not initial minus final. So delta x is x final minus x initial. This is a really crucial equation. What would be the SI standard unit for displacement? Meters. That's right. It's got to be in the same as this. Let's say this is the object's initial position, and this is the object's final position. What would its delta x be? 5 minus 2, which is 3. Right. Excellent. Except, we want to get into the habit of always putting a sign on the displacement, even for a positive number. Usually, people don't put signs on positive numbers, but in physics, it's really handy to put signs in front of both positive and negative numbers, if you can go either way, because maybe one of the most the big, one of the biggest sources of mistakes that people make in physics is getting the signs wrong. That's probably yeah, be an obstacle throughout. Well, one of the first ways to make sure you don't get the signs wrong is to make sure that you're thinking about the sign. And the way to do that is to always put the sign in front of the number, even if it's positive, if it could go either way. So we would say this is positive 5, which means that, um, well, let's see. Did I get this number right? Maybe you said the right thing and I wrote down the wrong thing. Oh, what was the number? Positive 3. I think you said the right thing. OK. Yeah. Positive 3 meters. That means we're not just moving 3 meters. We're moving 3 meters to the right. Good. Okay. 
So if this is the initial point and this is the final point, what would delta y be? Delta y is plus 1 minus plus 4. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Good. Good. Now, you basically did that mathematically, and that's perfectly fine. But you could also just do that based on common sense. How many steps are we moving? It's clear we're moving three steps. Yeah. And are we moving in the positive direction or the negative direction? Negative. That's right. So for me, that's an easier way to come up with this. Rather than doing 1 minus 4, I would just say clearly we're moving three steps, and we're moving in the negative direction. So that would give us negative 3. OK. Doesn't get, that's not giving you any trouble. So now we understand displacements. All right, now the key concepts are velocity and acceleration. So let's make sure we understand those, especially acceleration. But first of all, let's see if velocity works. Um, do you remember what's the symbol that we're using for velocity? V. That's right, lowercase v. Lower or Lowercase v, yeah. Um, later we'll use uppercase v for volume. So we're going to use lowercase v for velocity. Just in ordinary common sense terms, what does the velocity tell you about an object? I would think that it's the speed at which something is moving over a distance. Yeah, that's a good explanation. That's a good explanation. Um, it just left one uh, thing out, but that's a good explanation. So the velocity basically tells us the speed and direction that something is moving in. Right, whereas the speed only tells us... The speed. Right. Yeah, or, it, or to, to be less circular, um, the speed just tells you how fast the object is moving, but right. the velocity tells you both how fast it's moving and what direction it's moving. Right. Okay. That turns out, that seems trivial, but that turns out to be a really crucial distinction. They really want you to know the difference between velocity and speed. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the speed is how fast you're going, but the velocity is both the speed and the direction. So it both tells you how fast you're going and which way you're going. Right. The way you're going to put that, um, maybe you've already seen this idea, but more, you'll see this more next week. The way we would put that is that velocity is a vector, not a scalar. Um, and the key point of a vector is a scalar is something that does not include a direction. And a vector is something that does include a direction. I don't know what a scalar is. You brought it up today. It's a number? Is right. Well, the best, again, the best definition is a scalar is a variable that does not indicate a direction, and a vector is a variable that does indicate a direction. So we can make a note of that, and then it can give you an example, maybe, that'll make it clearer. So a vector is a variable that does indicate a direction. That's right. As you go through the course, it's crucial to memorize which variables are scalars and which are vectors. For example, we just mentioned that velocity is a vector and speed is a scalar. And I can show you what that means with an example. Okay. For example, suppose I ask you what's the speed of that object? Well, you might say that the speed is 5 meters per second. Then suppose I ask you what's the velocity? Well, if you said it was 5 meters per second, that would be incorrect, or at least incomplete. You'd have to say it's 5 meters per second north, or 5 meters per second south. That is, you have to give both how fast it's going and the direction. So more, the key, I'm sorry. sorry. More mathematically, could you also just say that it's plus or minus negative 5? That's right. That's an excellent point. So what you just pointed out is there's more than one way to describe a direction. Sometimes, and you pick the one that's convenient for the problem you're working on. Sometimes it's convenient to describe a direction in words, and sometimes it's convenient to describe a direction in, um, with a sign. That's right. So you're right, usually we would normally pick north to be our positive direction. So another way to describe this is that we would say that the velocity is positive 5 meters per second, and then we'd have to recognize that the direction is encoded in this sign over here. It would be easy to ignore the sign, but that's actually giving us important information. That's why, again, we, um, I was mentioning we should get in the habit of always putting a sign in front of uh, the number for a vector, even if it's a positive number, because there's important information that's encoded there. So a vector is something which is not fully described unless you've given a direction. 
And a scalar is something which you can fully describe without a direction. That's about the best definition we can get. That'll be good enough for this course. So we can see that speed is a scalar because it's fully described without giving a direction. Okay. But for the vector, we have to put in the direction. Okay. Uh, another way to talk about vectors is uh, a vector generally has a magnitude and a direction. For example, here the magnitude is 5 meters per second mm -hmm. and the direction is north. Or we could say the magnitude is 5 meters per second and the direction is the positive direction. So another way to think of a vector is it's something that's described with both a magnitude and a direction. Okay. And a scalar is something that can be described. Basically, you, what you said before was really right. A scalar is something that's just a number without a direction. This isn't really just a number because this part of it really represents a direction. All right, that's an important idea. Your, your course is going to get that more maybe tomorrow and next week. Um, but now we've seen the basic idea. 